So if you're in front of a group of investors, why do you feel confident this will approve? Is there any chance of MDMA not being approved? Hey everyone, welcome to our latest TDR Psychedelic Exclusive. Thanks for checking in. I'm your host, Shad Dales. It is earnings seasons for one of the big companies in the space, which is Numinous Wellness. And I know a lot of viewers are anticipating our latest podcast as we welcome back in the CEO of Numinous Wellness, which trades the TSX under the ticker symbol NU. M I Peyton Nyquist. How are you, sir? I uh, hope you're doing, doing well. well. Doing, doing well, well, doing well. How's the summer been? I know, uh, I don't know about you. I haven't really been able to go outside and check the weather because it's been very, very busy. And I'm sure you can probably relate as this summer just flies by yeah. as you put a lot of the infrastructure to, uh, in place, right? Yeah, it's it's been a, a very busy summer, albeit um, I, I think a very exciting one. Um, That's you know, the, key, the, right? Yeah, like the sentiment feels really, really good, and and frankly, there's there's a lot happening at the moment in regards to the space. And we've talked about maps, and and obviously, yeah. you know, all you've seen in regards to things like billing codes being approved. Like it's this summer feels like um, it'll be the summer we look back at how we put everything together is what I'm seeing, right? Yeah, this feels like a, a roll up your sleeves and and get ready kind of summer, which, which is great. So, yeah, well, let's dive into it. Your latest financial results for the third quarter of 2023 reported those aftermarket on Monday. One of the main takeaways was first the company's revenue growth, which rose 12.6% on a second, uh, excuse me, sequential basis uh, on the back of rising average number of appointments per operating day and increased revenue at uh, Cedar clinical research, which is based in Toronto. So uh, as an investor, what are the main takeaways uh, for investors should that when they glean, I guess, from uh, this quarter on their operational side of the business? You know, I, I think we just continue to demonstrate really solid growth. Um, and, and I think with that, we've really continued to really deeply understand like what is a model that's very successful and scalable. And, um, you know, the, the, there's been consolidation as we've talked a lot about in the space and that that continues. And I think as we look towards, you know, what what we've been excited about in preparing poor and, and what other people have been excited about is is things like MDMA assisted therapy, mm -hmm. uh, psilocybin, you know, being not far behind that. And so, you know, while expansion is is important and, and key, I think equally or as more important is you know, the last number of quarters and, and frankly, the last couple of years is for us to really, really demonstrate on a site by site basis that these are operating really well. They make money, they're scalable, they're yeah. effective in regards to treating clients, which is, you know, the most important thing. Um, and then as we look to, you know, then leverage that to go kind of exponentially grow the business um, with the launching of MDMA assisted therapy. Well, I think it's important to note, uh, Compass came out a week and a half ago and said uh, commercialization for your psilocybin therapy will take place, but not until 2027. So that's a lot mm -hmm. of runway time for people focused on MDMA. Um, mm -hmm. But as we get back to the earnings, um, uh, I guess one of the takeaways in your post earnings uh, press release was the commentary about this being a transition quarter. What did you mean by that? You know, we've and we've talked a lot about this in regards to reducing the burn rate and just really repri not reprioritizing, but I would say doubling down on on where we really see a lot of focus for the business. Um, you know, the the clinical model, and when I say clinical model, you know, yes, what we're doing in clinic, but also training and CCR. Um, you know, really continue to be big priorities for us. Um, and with that, you know, we've, we've built a lot of assets in the space that have been very necessary for us to grow and scale the company. Yeah. But I would say, you know, over the last couple of quarters, we've, we've just really focused on, you know, where do we, where do we see revenue generation and, and, um, call it, you know, positive revenue generation. Um, and then with that, you know, where do we see, big levers for the company's growth over, you know, the coming couple quarters and years. So um, that's, that's kind of been the big focus for us. And, and frankly, as, as we said, you know, this summer is definitely a building yeah. summer. We've, we've been tracking alongside maps and their pathway and, 
you know, as, as we know, they, they've got their second uh, successful phase three that's going to be reported soon and, and going into the fall will be, you know, drug submission, rescheduling, you know, that, and that path is very clear. So it's really been us getting, getting, you know, prepared for that. And, um, and we're really, you know, we feel we're absolutely the best prepared. Um, yeah. And, and we already talked about the Denver conference a little bit, but you know, it's been frankly a little bit overwhelming to just the amount of positive reception we got at that conference. And, and frankly, I think how Numinous is positioned within the industry as really being that service provider arm that is going to be really necessary for yeah. not just maps, but, but other companies who are going to try and launch drugs here over the next couple of years and, and need a service infrastructure in order to do that. So let me ask you this. Some of our viewers came back and some people emailed us saying, wow, like, you know, this is a lot uh, that's uh, dependent on MDMA being approved. And you and I have discussed this before in the past. It's a foregone conclusion. So if you're in front of a group of investors, why do you feel confident this will approve? Is there any chance of MDMA not being approved? You know, while, while it's, while it's definitely, um, I, I don't know if I would say it's dependent on MDMA being approved. I, I would say there's a there's a very very big catalyst that we've been getting prepared for being right. MDMA be, being approved, you know I I and I feel like we should maybe always start the call with just a, a you know a, a re comforting everybody in regards to MDMA being approved, but I don't know I don't know if there's much else that you would need to see in order to get approval. I and mean, these phase three seen, readouts will define that, right? You know, whether it's a phase three readouts, we've seen billing codes get approved. We've seen, Good point. you know, every, everything from, you know, and don't get me wrong, U.S. you know, presidents say things sometimes that don't necessarily <laughs> come into fruition, but you, everything to you've, you've had Biden, you know, put it in, in an address saying yeah. that he intends on legalizing MDMA and psilocybin therapy. So well, you, you make some good points about the AMA improving insurance codes. I think that's what people have to go back to. Why is this being a, implemented right now? Right. And, and, and not just like broad stroke billing codes, but like, you know, the, if, if people go and read that information, like they've done their homework, yeah. it's, it's, it's significant and they, and they don't, they don't approve billing codes just for the sake unless of, they see something they're not looking for things to do so um if no. and when this does pass by the fda which you think it's going to the next thing we want to switch now to is the numinous network so how is mm -hmm. that preparation going as it's uh, set to unveil the for, first full quarter of operations it's it's been incredible to see the positive response not just from practitioners but also again, from drug developers who, you know, are really, really excited about that. Um, I, you know, again, coming out of the conference, the, the, the amount of interest is we're, we're now at a point of, of frankly, it's more us prioritizing, you know, who we, who we want to go through that process with first, um, that there, there's no shortage of interest. And frankly, you know, while yes, there's a lot of excitement about MDMA therapy, there's a lot of clinics out there that are very excited about ketamine assisted therapy that haven't just haven't been able to get a model together that works. And so, there's what? a, there's a lot of interest in people using our model to be able to offer just ketamine therapy and, and traditional mental health services. So with the amount of ketamine clinics that are across the U S cause that's something to factor into. And there's a lot, and a lot of them are not profitable, but with the right infrastructure in play and the right mm -hmm. practitioner training, you think that kind of implementation of education could turn yeah. a clinic from being uh, into the positive is what you're indicating? Yeah. Not, not just that, but things like protocol, like clinic SOPs, protocols, training, but reimbursement. I mean, we, we get right with the amount of reimbursement we get and the infrastructure that we've built around reimbursement is really, you know, I, I can't underscore the significance of that for not just MDMA therapy when it's available, but ketamine, you know, ketamine as well. We we've been, and, and, you know, Spravato most recently put out their numbers. Thanks. We are, you know, I, I, I can't give too, too much detail about this, but, but we are a, a very, very big percentage in regards to amount that gets reimbursed for Spravato. And, you know, that's something obviously we'll, we'll look to leverage for MDMA assisted therapy, but for ketamine as well, most people who are offering ketamine therapy 
are are having their clients still have to pay out of pocket. Right. Um, you know, we get 80% of our ketamine gets covered under insurance at the moment. What's the cost for people that are doing that right now out of pocket? You know, it's it's anything from a couple hundred dollars to thousands of dollars. Yeah. It, it sort of de it depends on what your what your pathway is and and how dependent you are or, or you know, how severe your your symptoms are. That adds up. Inflation, mm -hmm. rising interest rates this good day and time. Uh, it's it's people's spending has definitely been shortened. And I think it's taking a big effect this summer versus last summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, where is a time go? It's been a month now since we were in Denver. But when we look at that panel, that discussion that you're with Rick Doblin, uh, we mm -hmm. were in an area capacity is around 2000 people. It was standing room only. There was a great response and there was a big mm -hmm. lineup at your booth of practitioners afterwards. So um, without giving specific guidance or numbers, Sure. How's the response been since that conference? Have you seen like an accelerated interest since over the last month, uh, based on that panel discussion? Yeah, no, we've we, the training's gone extremely, extremely well for us over the last little bit. And you know, I I do want to say with all of our guidance, we haven't included any guidance on training, like and in particular MDMA assisted therapy training. So. Um, we, we will, once our training trial gets approved, but we haven't put out any guidance until after that approval okay. happens, which is, which should be in the next, you know, couple of weeks or months. Um, but with that, I mean, we've sold out, um, we, we've sold out training for the foreseeable future and we've started to add trainings now. Um, and while we can't start to pre-enroll people for the MDMA experiential training, I mean, we have people reaching out asking if they can, you know, prepay now to get themselves in the queue for for when it's when it's available. So the demand is is huge, and and frankly, I think what's really exciting about this is the the majority of the people who are reaching out yeah. are not. Are, are not the sort of like psychedelic converted or, or people who have a lot of experience with psychedelics. It's a lot of healthcare practitioners. Like traditional medicine? Just doing traditional medicine who don't have a psychedelic background, who want to be able to come and have one of these experiences, but they want to do it in a legal way that not just is legal, but that they can represent to their clients, right? To, as they're going and building out their practice, they can say, I've done a legal you know, MDMA assisted therapy session with Numinous in conjunction with MAPS, you know, it's a, that's a, a big thing to be able to hang beside your shingle that we're going to be able to give people the opportunity to do. That's interesting. So sold out for the foreseeable future. Like when you say foreseeable future, is that like month, two months, three months? So, so we've been doing about one, one every two months at the moment, one, one kind of training cohort. And, and we're definitely going to be adding, I think we're the, can't again can't get into it too too yeah, much yeah. but but we'll definitely be adding more trainings over over the next uh coming couple of months here so in a nutshell the amount of interest has actually superseded your expectations is what i'm reading very much so yeah okay let's now switch big question and this is an important one for a lot of people a lot of people concerned mm -hmm. about cash burn which is a lot of it, uh, investors attention going on your latest earnings report on a on the mm -hmm. balance sheet the company ended the quarter with 13 million which was down from 19.7 in q2 and beyond the target monthly burn rate of a million dollars per month, as stated uh, on a podcast with us back in January. So first question pertaining to this, um, mm -hmm. outline and explain, I guess, the the cash drawdown, why it's remained elevated. Yeah. So um, and not, you know, I'll, I'll double down on the, on the mention on the podcast and say that uh, our, our we did also announce in the earnings call yesterday um that we do see that burn rate getting down to a million dollars a month very very you know august august is when we anticipate to really see um the the, the changes the, the the significant amount of the changes and, and primarily you know we've gone as we've announced we've gone through reductions and stuff like that you've got to pay severance you've got to you know there's a, there's a way to do that that is um continuing to support the business. You know, we, we could have gone with a, a hatchet and, and chopped a bunch of stuff off, but revenue would suffer, um, profitability would suffer and the business would suffer. And so we've again, taken a very intentional approach where, you know, yes, the, the burn rate still looks high at the moment on a historical quarter basis, but that's because again, we've, we've had to pay some severance and we've wanted to do that in a way 
that is continuing to build the necessary assets that we've needed, like training, like this numinous network and things like that. So we do see that burn rate getting down to a million a month, um, but we want to be able to do so in a way that we don't hinder revenue and profitability growth. And we think that there's a way, we don't think, we know that there's a way to do that where we can continue to see quarter over quarter revenue growth, margin improvement, um, and, and track towards profitability, again, at a time where we need to make sure that we're ready for MDMA-assisted therapy. Yeah. And so that's, that's the path we've taken. You also mentioned that you feel you have enough cash to operate all the way until when MDMA is approved by the FDA, which is slated to happen, let's say, around mid-2024. Can you explain mm -hmm. what you mean by that? Because when you're doing the math and numbers, some people are saying that doesn't add up. So what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as I've said, we, we see by August to be able to see that burn rate down to a million a month. And we, and it's not, we don't plan on getting it to a million in a month and then keeping it at a million a month. We, we want to see that continue to improve. And we, and we see that with revenue growth and margin improvement. And so, right. um, everything from, as I mentioned, things like training, things like the numinous network, all things, frankly, that we have like real tangible numbers for, we we've seen the interest. We continue to get signups. Um, and so we're tracking alongside, you know, our, our budget, actually, we, we've continued to, to meet budget, our, our sort of budget guidance and expectations. And, and in some ways we've actually, uh, superseded them as well. And we'll look to continue to do that. Um, you know, there's, there are some assets that we've created in the company that we be, you know, have a significant amount of value, but are maybe not core to us that, um, that we're looking at some strategic opportunities for. That's interesting. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, the, the space is again at a very exciting time where um, you've seen a, a big consolidation, but you're now seeing quite a bit of pickup, quite a bit of excitement. And, you know, Numinous has a, a ton of really, really exciting assets that, um, you know, I think would serve very, very well in, in, uh, you know, different organizations or, or, or on different projects that, uh, whether that's through collaboration or, or whether that's through, um, some kind of strategic, okay. um, alliance, that's, that's kind of what we see over the, the next couple of months. That was going to be my next question. So that's definitely something to consider because as I've, you know, from you and I, when we first start talking a couple of years ago to where we are now, uh, people completely understand, especially when they hear you speak, you're basically clinical model industry leader, your partnership with maps. And, you know, one begs to ask the question as you go down that lane and identify exactly who you are, what your brands are, what you do, and how do you plan to like, you know, generate revenue? Um, some of these cash burning assets might be not in the company's, I guess, narrative, um, in the future. Mm -hmm. So some of those discussions you're reevaluating, um, you would basically say nothing is not left on the table right now or not left off the table, I should say, as mm -hmm. far as preserving cash, generating revenue opportunities and kind of like reevaluating certain things, I'm assuming, or, uh, uh, hundred. Yeah. So, so absolutely. But also I, I think, you know, and, and I, and I understand this, you know, that it's been a tough couple of years, but again, from, from our vantage point, we also see the tide turning. And so frankly, you know, we've, we've, raise the money that we did. We've built the business that we did because we knew that we would have to weather, you know, a, a, a storm like this. And I think we're now on the other side of it. Again, I, I think you see nothing but positive momentum in the space here for the next little bit. You've seen, you know, the major markets down in the U.S. have continued to improve. It, it does feel like things are, are getting better. And so yeah. with those assets, we want to make sure that, you know, one, Yes, we're we're continuing to to manage the burn rate as significantly as possible, but let's also set the company up for you know some pretty significant success over the coming couple of years. And yeah, um, I think people sometimes forget that um, you know this isn't the first significant downturn that the sort of psychedelic call it space had. Um, there just wasn't that many organizations when it first happened. But when we went first went public, that was. You know, there was, I think there was three or four organizations that were maybe public at the time. And that was the first big consolidation in the space. And yeah. so we, we learned a lot from that. And then frankly, when you saw, you know, the explosion uh, a couple of years ago, we raised the money that we did and we built the business that we did knowing that, 
you know, times get tough. And, and that's what we've always built the company for. And frankly, now, again, believe we're coming out of a tough time to a point of, of something that's really, really exciting that we've always, you know, built the company around. When, when I started Numinous five years ago, plus, um, it was through a relationship with Maps. And so that's, that's always what we've created the organization to be able to provide um, access and, and an opportunity for. Yeah. And I think that's what gathers people's interest is that partnership with them and the over, you know, um, developing and growing uh, relationship that you have and the opportunities it presents. So raising money right now in the foreseeable future short term is not something you're considering. Is that correct? No. Nope. nope. <clears throat> okay. Um, we've seen companies like uh, Cybin Maps or Cybin, excuse me, a Thai compass that list on the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ. Uh, they've seen some yeah. good price movement uh, over the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So uh, another question is, um, how much of a priority and focus is it right now about uh, NASDAQ aspirations? Yeah, it's a, it's definitely on uh, on our path. Um, you know, being being a U.S. listed issuer is is not a cheap uh, endeavor, but also, you know, far more eyeballs. And, and for us, what we think is really exciting is, you know, with the work we've been doing with maps and with the work we continue to do with maps, um, as people look to get exposure to MDMA assisted therapy with maps still being a private entity, um, Numinous is, is probably the best place to do that. And so, um, it's, it's definitely something that as we look towards the fall, um, and I, and I've mentioned this a few times, we've, we've always continued to keep everything ready for a big U S listing. Um, for us, you know, really this summer has been about getting operations really, really tight and, and efficient. Um, and then as we look at the fall, uh, we, we definitely will move towards a, a senior listing on a U.S. exchange. Um, and, and so we're, we're very excited about that. Do you know like a rough idea of the cost it would be to list on something like the NASDAQ? Yeah, it, 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 we've, we've got that budgeted. It's, it's actually a part of our, um, a part of our run rate budgeting. So we, right. we have that mapped out. Um, it's not my first, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's not my first rodeo, but, yeah. um, yeah. Yeah. so, so we've, we've definitely budgeted for that, but we want to make sure that we do so at a, at a meaningful time. Um, you know, that you saw, um, I don't want to name names, but you saw, you know, a number of, of public psychedelic companies rush to get on a, a U.S. exchange when the market was kind of pointed the other way. Um, and, and those are tough tides to turn. Um, we want we to make sure so that we're close from turning the corner here. I keep yeah. saying that and, to everybody. That's, that's what and I that's, think. and that's what we want to, we want to make sure that we're, we're going on a U.S. exchange when the momentum is, you know, really firmly pointed in the right direction and we can generate a lot of excitement. Um, you know, we, we were, to be, to be honest, we were close a couple of times over the last year and a half of, of doing that. Um, but market just wasn't there in the time. I mean, right. yeah. well, you want to talk, so, about, yeah, you want to talk about timing. Okay. Maps. Finally, I want to bring up phase three yeah. readouts for MDMA investors obviously mm -hmm. are waiting for the final data to be published, which will then pave the way for maps to start its uh, new drug application filing with the FDA. Mm -hmm. So. That is the momentum that this industry needs are these readouts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, are we finally here where it's just a matter of weeks before we see these readouts and this is the turning point for the industry? Yeah. So, and, and I think we've talked about this, but maybe just quickly um, so people understand those those reports are done by a, a third party Correct. journal uh, or it's it's not reported by the company. So it's not in their it's not in their control when they get read out. Um, but everything that I continue to hear, um, is, you know, sometime before the end of summer, um, that, that, that readout will happen, which, uh, you know, I, I, I'd love to see it. I, I personally, I, I, you know, I'd love to see it anytime, but I, I'd, I'd love to see it, you know, towards the end of August when everybody's back from summer vacations and, and, uh, you know, getting, getting back to work, but yeah. I'll, I'll be happy. Uh, I'll see it on a slow Saturday in, in, uh, July if I have to, but, uh, money making you know. months are from Labor Day to Christmas, aren't they? That's right. That's right. Listen, um, 
uh, appreciate you checking in and providing the guidance just as far as direction on the latest earnings report. Um, mm -hmm. Big takeaways, obviously, is uh, we had to pay out a lot of severances as far as cash burn over the last few months. You've really re uh, reduced your overall uh, overhead. Um, I would assume that obviously uh, your new CFO, uh, how has that been an impact as far as strategy and cash burn? Yeah, tremendous. Um, he, he's been spectacular. Um, and, you know, I, I, I do have to say John Fong, our, our previous CFO, um, you know, Numinous wouldn't be where it is today without the work that he's done. And so we're, we're really, really grateful. And we wish him and his family all the best as they're going through a, a season of, of uh, focusing on family. But um, Nikhil, you know, since coming, he's, he's hit the ground running hard. And, yeah. um, you know, he's, he's got a, a really great track record of coming into organizations and um, really, really beefing up the sort of financial operations side and, and huge success on the capital market side. So you're seeing well. a big so, difference already with him on. Yeah, he's been tremendous. Okay. All right. Well, let's keep in touch. Let's, uh, like you said, these readouts, I, I, I don't really care. Like if somebody told me they're coming out tomorrow, I'd say, bring them out tomorrow. Let's not yeah, wait. I'm with, I'm with you. Day. I'm with you. I will. I will. Anytime I see him, I won't complain. Yeah, exactly. Complain. Anyways, yeah. uh, keep uh, doing the hard work. I know there's a lot of important questions that we wanted to ask here to provide a little bit of uh, direction for a lot of investors, but cash burn being one, but the overall revenue growth is promising. And then most importantly, too, just, you know, your thoughts on how you're so confident with the FDA approving MDMA. But I think that was uh, pretty explained really good. But leave a comment below. Let us know if there's any more questions that you want to ask Peyton. We'll reach out to him and provide feedback for you. And, uh, you know, again, as I said, appreciate the time. Likewise. Thanks for having me. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. All right. Thanks, Peyton. What's up, everyone? So what would you think of the interview? Are there any more questions you want us to ask that you want to learn more of? Then leave a comment below and let us know what you think. As usual, share this video with your network, smash that like button, and most importantly, subscribe to our channel because we would not be here without you. Thanks for watching, everyone.